Hey book nerds, I'm Travis and this is Travis Reads Books. I have Sarah back with me today and we're going to do another book tag. This is one I dug deep into the annals of booktube and found from a few years ago, but it seems like a lot of fun. Uh, it was originally done by Sam Nonsense. I'll put a link in the description to her original video. And this is the Nintendo booktube tag. Question 1. NES. A classic you want to read. For me, it's To Kill a Mockingbird, which I really can't believe I've never read. But I just bought it today, and I am absolutely going to read it very soon. So for me, it's 1984. I'm more than a little embarrassed that I've never actually read it. Number 2. Super NES. A sequel you like more than the first. I have nothing for this because I very, very rarely read sequels or series. Almost never. And the few times that I have, I, they have never been better than the original. And I read a lot of series, but normally the sequel is not better than the first one. However, uh, Wonderlust by Anne Aguirre, which is a sequel to Sorrentha Jacks, I felt it was better than the first one, because the first one did a lot of setup. Uh, so Wonderlust was where all the action was, and I really adored the whole premise of it. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe Two Towers is better than The Fellowship. Really? Maybe. I don't know. I love The Fellowship. Yeah. So yeah, good. The How, good. like, yeah. all of them getting together. Yeah, that's a hard choice. Mm. Number three, Nintendo 64, a book that revolutionized the way you look at the world. For me, it was a portrait of the artist as a young man by James Joyce. Uh, I read that when I was a teenager, and it really made me look differently at the world of creating art and how I would fit into that wor world one day, or at least I hoped to, by being a writer. For me, it's Handmaid's Tale. I know that sounds very cliche, but I read it when I was in high school, and it really made me stop and think. It made me think about the world and what could possibly happen. Number four, GameCube, a popular book that did not go over so well. That's ridiculous. I'm going to veto that. So GameCube is going to be a really great book that never gets the recognition it deserves because the GameCube was a great system. I don't know I don't know what Sam's nonsense was talking about because the GameCube is one of the greatest systems of all time. And it's really underrated. So my book was Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. Um, I think a lot of people like the book, but people don't really talk about it as a classic of YA fiction and then in the same circles as like Speak or Go Ask Alice and I think it is absolutely as emotional and as poignant as, as any other of those classics. So for me, I picked an author, uh, Jacqueline Carey. Uh, she's written a number of fantasy series. Her Agent of Hell series, not Hell as in H-E-L-L, -L, but Hell as in H-E-L as in the Norse goddess Hell is absolutely amazing, and I find a lot of people don't know about her stuff. Question five, The Wii, a new favorite book. For me, it's The Knife of Never Letting Go. I just finished this a couple days ago, and it was so amazing. Like, it is one of the best books I've ever read, and certainly one of the most unforgettable. For me, it's The Queen of Blood. Uh, I just finished this yesterday by Sarah Beth Thurst. And it is emotional and thought-provoking and fantasy elements I love, magic elements. Oh, it was just great. I can't wait for the sequel. Number six, Nintendo Power. What's your favorite graphic novel series? For me, it's Welcome Back, Frank by Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. I read that might be 10 years ago now and it's probably still my favorite graphic novel series i don't read a lot of graphic novels i do like manga 
So, um, Kari Kano would be my favorite, His and Her Circumstances. It's a shoujo manga. Um, and it's romantic and lovely and sweet and very angst-ridden. Number seven, Super Mario, a character you'd like to squish like a Goomba. For me, it was Art Beckstein from The Mysteries of Pittsburgh by Michael Chabon. I, I love this book, but this character just made the worst possible choices at odds with all common sense, all logic, at odds with his own happiness at all times. Every time there was a solution to one of his problems, he just picked the worst possible way to go about achieving it, and everything always turned bad. It just drives me crazy. So my character is kind of similar to that. It's the father in the book, The Girl from Everywhere by Heidi Halid. Um, he only focuses on himself. He does all of these horrible things that always go horribly, horribly wrong and leaves his poor daughter really without a father at all. He's just, he's horrendous. All right, number eight, Zelda, a newer fantasy that you consider a modern classic. I don't read a lot of fantasy, but I have to say that Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass I would consider a modern classic. I was really blown away by that, especially as someone who doesn't really get into fantasy. I think it influenced my own writing a lot. I love that series, for sure. Um, the one that I chose was The Queen of the Tearling. Um, that series by Erica Johannesson uh, is just wonderful. It makes you think, um, and it's got all the most amazing fantasy elements and things that I haven't necessarily seen before. Loved it. I remember I read the first one. It was really good, but because I never read sequels or series, I haven't read it anymore. Well, I've read all three and they're amazing. Uh, number 10, Pokemon. Book editions that you'd like to collect. For me, it is the new Harry Potters that just came out and all the pages are colored to match the alternating colors of the different houses, of the scarves that they wear, is really cool. Though, as has been pointed out to me, if you if I actually bought them and put them on my shelf, all those pages would be face to the wall, so no one would ever see them. So, <laughs> I still want them. <laughs> um, the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. I adore pretty much every book covers for those series, so... Kind of like all of them. I don't think we've ever had the whole set mm -mm. from the same edition. No. Like they're always from like 10 years apart and different covers and different styles, different sizes. I still want all of them. <laughs> number 11. You skipped number 9. Oh, I skipped number 9. Number 9. <laughs> Samus Aran. Favorite sci-fi. Uh, for me, it would easily be the knife of never letting go, but since I already used that, and that kind of disqualifies it, uh, I will say my favorite sci-fi, at least until two days ago when I finished The Knife of Never Letting Go, was Starship Troopers by Robert Heinlein. I read, read that when I was very young. My brother was reading it in university and let me borrow it, uh, and I was really blown away by it. And I'm also a fan of the movie, so it gets it gets derided a lot, but I think it's surprisingly smart. I really like that one too. Uh, but I'm kind of torn. So there's two sci-fi books that I read very early when I was quite young, uh, and they stick in my mind. So Little Fuzzy by H. Bean Piper, which is just it's so good. It there's this species that's found on this planet and nobody thinks they're sentient, but they actually are. And it's about the fight to prove that they are in fact sentient. I love that series. The other one is For Love of Mother Not, which is by Alan Dean Foster and was like hard sci-fi uh, that I hadn't read anything like it before. 
I think I read both of them when I was probably around 10. They were super, they were super young. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number 11, Donkey Kong, a book with original characters. So I'm going to say Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy, which has some really wild and crazy eccentric characters and terrifying characters. As is usually the way with Cormac McCarthy. Um, I said Anne Bishop's other series. Really, any of Anne Bishop's books have very unique characters, characters that you don't necessarily see in other things. She tends to write a lot of characters that are kind of human, but are kind of not. So this series, the other series, has a lot of characters that are almost human, but not quite, and they're very... You just get lost in their stories. All right, question 12. Nintendo fandom, your favorite Nintendo game favorite Nintendo game was Final Fantasy 3, which is now referred to as Final Fantasy 6, because it was the sixth game, but it was only the third one released in the States, so at the time they called it Final Fantasy 3. So when I was growing up, it was called Final Fantasy 3. That's my absolute favorite game for the Super Nintendo. My favorite's Animal Crossing. Okay, but which Animal I can't choose that. I love <laughs> all of them. But did you like the original one? Yeah, I love the original one. Um, they, the whole Animal Crossing world is amazing. Uh, I don't know. I guess the latest edition of Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing New Life, uh, mm. New Leaf, which I still am playing. It is. It's a great game. Well, that was our Nintendo BookTuber tag. Thanks to Sarah for being on my channel again. If you like the video, be sure and click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click subscribe so you won't miss any more of our amazing Team Up videos. I enjoy doing these with you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Love and respect. See you next time.